Chris, let's start off today's slate with the Big Ten burner from yesterday morning. Illinois gets the win 20-18 to 18 over Penn State. We went to nine overtimes, and everybody, I'll start us off with this, everybody freaked out. It's the longest game in uh, college football history, and if you just look at overtimes, yeah, it is. Uh, I, I think I texted our group at some point and said, these two offenses may never convert a two-point conversion. There's not enough space. They may never they may never get in the end zone. But this is this is what you get from these two point conversion games, right? Just back and forth. Everything is chaos. There is no rhyme or reason as to who will win. There were several people tweeting, if this is what we're gonna get, I'd almost rather have ties. I don't know about all that, but this was the the most brilliant game by Brett Bielema. That, that I can remember. And for it to come after everybody criticized him last week for the statements that he made about his offensive line, obviously it worked. <laughs> we talked about this on the show on Friday. And, I mean, what, what do we have here? 357 net yards rushing. I, this, and they only, hit, they only did 38 yards passing. 8 out of 21 passing for 38 yards Ran it 67 times for 357 yards. Really, really, it was a better rushing performance because that includes 10 carries for negative 8 yards for Sitkowski. You take that out, and the two running backs, Chase Brown, 33 carries, 223 yards for 6.8 a clip and a touchdown. Joshua McRae, 24 carries, 142 yards, and he had 5.9 per clip. This was awesome to see. I didn't expect it from Penn State, uh, but let me get your thoughts on on Bielema and the Illini first. Well, first, I was happy for Bielema. You know that. You know I love him, and I'm so glad that he's kind of turning things around there a little bit. I guess a win like this a big deal. When their starting quarterback went out, I did not think they were going to be able to, to make any of these conversions. Backup came in. Backup made a play. Penn State's backup couldn't do it. So, you know, it just is what it is. Without Sean, that offense for Penn State is maybe one of the worst in the country. They, they've got no explosivity. They've got no push on the front to run the football. That He can't hit receivers when they're wide open. They're just not very good at all. And uh, thankfully, they've got a great defense. They can keep them in the ball games, but it wasn't enough. The quote-unquote longest, we have to find a different word for longest because it was 100% not the longest, all right? It just wasn't. The two-point conversion went goes pretty fast. And, and through timeline-wise, this game was much shorter than the Ole Miss-Arkansas uh, overtime game that, that happened a couple of years ago because you're just trying to make one play. Now, I have said this before, and I stated again, I know that there are a few teams that play guys on both sides of the ball. It's rare, but I don't give a damn. I want the referees to put their track shoes on. I want one offense and defense on one side of the field and the offensive defensive coaches for those teams on that side of the field. I want the other offense and defense on the far side of the field opposite of them. And I want one play. And then the referee grabs the ball, runs to the other side. All the, all the referees get in position. We run another play and we do that twice and then go to a commercial. And then we do that two more times. We could get through four OTs in less than three minutes or four minutes. We could do basically a minute of play and, and there's no reason we can't speed this thing up. There's no reason to run everybody off and then run the other team on and get all set up. No, 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 no. Offensive and defensive coaches for your, your allotted players and teams. Divide up, separate out, and and you just wait and watch, and that's it. The uh, the total play count is the biggest part of this, right? This is why they swapped it to three overtimes. Is when you start doing two point conversions. Uh, I believe Penn State had sixty three offensive snaps, yeah. and Illinois had eighty eight. Yeah, if I'm Ole not Miss, mistaken, Ole Miss, Ole Miss runs that in regulation. Yes. Like, it, it, Ole Miss runs 90 plays plus. I was just about to regular. say, they run more than that every game. Well, that, that Tennessee Ole Miss game last week, because of the, the pace there of were, play. Yeah, there were, there were 100 uh, something plays ran. Yeah, in it was, regulation. It was, yeah, it was like 195 in regulation, I think, something right. like that. Uh, but that, yeah, no overtime, no nothing like that. It's just 
constant, right? Over so, and over. So this is this is far shorter, but they cannot just be running everybody off and on and go to a little TV timeout in between. No, just stop it. Just stop it. Get every get one offense over here in defense and one offense in defense. Split the coaches up. And everybody's on a headset. Everybody can be talking to one another. That's fine. We'll make this thing go a lot faster. Yes. Illinois' post-game win expectancy in this, which is odd for an overtime game, was 100%. They should have won this game based on the numbers 100% of the time. You don't get that that often. Uh, But they dominated in the trenches. Absolutely. My question here, uh, did an injured Sean Clifford, who clearly didn't look right in this game, did that really give you the best chance to win if you're Penn State coming out of a bye week? I mean, that's that's insane I, to me. I think without Sean, they've got nothing. So with him, if he can make a play, but he obviously wasn't any good. But I I just don't I don't think they have a good option. That's the problem is is there are no good options here. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Ryan McCracken jumped in and said, it's Chris's tennis show on after this. <laughs> People were listening last week. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.